Today's session is food stocking and healthy cooking techniques. And to guide us how, we have with us Ms. Rashmi Cherian. Rashmi is a registered dietitian and a certified sports and exercise nutritionist with a master's degree in food and nutrition. She is the founder of Wellness Wow's Nutrition Clinic and co-author of a book, The Fitness Currency. She has been awarded the National Health Award in 2017 for sports nutrition by Central Government of India for exemplary work in the field of sports nutrition. Her expertise includes neuronutrition and nutrigenomics. She currently serves as the official sports nutritionist for Punjab Football Club, Birel Art, Tenwick owned by Anil Kumble, Sports Authority of Andhra Pradesh and Sports Authority of Odisha and several other sports academies and organizations across India. She is also featured as a sports nutritionist on Swim India, the biggest online portal for swimmers in India. Her research papers have been published in two international journals. She has been a keynote speaker at various conferences, sports academies, schools, and corporates nationally and internationally. She is also a regular nutrition expert for various media outlets, writer for various magazines and newspapers, featured on television and radio. She is also the nutritionist of celebrities like Kannada superstar Sudeep Kicha, Suman Ranganathan, to name a few. For the convenience of everyone, we would be happy to take the questions at the end. Now, without taking any more time, I would request Ms. Rashmi to please take over from here. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. And so today I'm going to talk about the foods that we need to stock and the healthy cooking techniques. So the thing is this, we have been hearing about uh, all the immunity boosting foods. We should eat this, that, and all of that. But the point is, from where to start? And the thing is this, our lockdown has further extended till 3rd of May and we don't know for how long these virus safety measures are going to continue. Until then, we are locked down within our four walls of the house. So the thing is this, we have work from home, kids are around and so many things are going on. And above that, we need to take care of our health and it's extremely, extremely important. So the thing is this, a lot of us were like, I think, eating outside a lot or people who were in corporates who had like night shifts and all of that. We used to have dabbas from outside or ordering food from outside. But right now, those things are not possible. Maybe we do have some food ordering options, but the options are restricted. And the thing is this, we are more concerned about hygiene and social distancing right now. So when we know our lives have changed so much, we also have to change our living because we don't have any other option. We have to take care of ourselves. And the point is, a lot of us maybe were not cooking in the past, but right now we have to cook. We have to figure out. Maybe we are not so comfortable doing it. It's quite irritating at times, but we don't have an option. And the better and the healthier uh, option right now is to cook your own meals. So the thing is this, Take this as a learning, as a new skill, because, and I'm going to tell you a lot of things because it's not necessary always to cook a huge meal because we don't have time always to do that. I'm going to tell you a lot of quick tips that you can do and take care of the thing. And this learning of skill right now, of cooking skill, is going to help you once the entire situation becomes absolutely normal. Because take this learning of cooking whole meals and eating that is going to help you and on a longer run in case of taking care of your family or family members because unhealthy eating causes a lot of issues, a lot of health conditions, right? From obesity to diabetes, BP and everything. So healthy eating, it's not about, okay, you just start with the vegetables and fruits. It's not that always easy and it's it can't be that boring as well so healthy eating starts right from the foods that we need to stock and then how we need to go ahead in terms of cooking so before i give you the list of the foods that you can stock up what are the things that are very important because once you obtain that skill of uh, these things you will be able to stock up foods more wisely so the first thing is Plan ahead and set a goal. It's very, very important. So 
right now we are at home and maybe we are cooking all three meals every day every alternative whatever it is we need to plan like today what am i going to cook for lunch dinner and next day breakfast am i going to repeat my same vegetable and dal for the next meal or am i supposed to cook the same thing how your family trend is what are the likes and dislikes of your spouse your kids your entire family members planning is important because if you just get up in the morning and you think aaj kya banana hai what am i supposed to cook today and then we will end up eating either something like that out of a packet or maybe our breakfast will get delayed till 10 o'clock 11 o'clock so planning ahead is important just think in your mind okay i'm going to cook this 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 for the next two three days what are the ingredients i will require for that so first step that's very important second thing is take inventory of the ingredients now we have a tendency to buy things and stock up at home a lot of things will be lying in our fridge back of the shelf here and there and we will not be knowing so it's important that you take a note of the things that are already there at home are they reaching their expiry date okay so you need to have it's very important to have a list of all the food items that you have so that you do not end up wasting the food items that are there at home number 3 have a grocery list this again i see lacking with lot of people because when i go to a grocery store majority times i see people going around without any aim list is important otherwise you will end up missing out on the items that you were supposed to buy and you will end up buying those food items which you generally don't eat so list is extremely important jot down during the week it's like it suddenly pops up oh this is getting over i'm supposed to buy that keep a notepad either in your mobile or a or a booklet there in the kitchen i prefer having a small booklet in my kitchen because immediately i can just write it there because every time nowadays touching mobile is also not okay so it's very important to have your grocery list next fourth step is when you're going to a grocery store shop with your eyes and not fingers i think this statement itself is very clear you need to start from the counter where least touching happens don't start with the fruits and vegetable section because that section is like you majority people touch that to check the ripeness or the quality of the food don't start from there because once you touch all those things you don't know where the infection is or what and you will pass on that to yourself and to other uh, uh, items there in the store so start from the dry items like if you are going towards cereal grains and pulses side and pick up the item that you want to uh, buy don't keep picking up different different items and especially with fruits and vegetables just see first check with your eyes like these are the things it looks good i should take up that so avoid frequent touching of the food items when you visit a grocery store next comes think nutrition it's important now see i don't have to explain you in detail what nutrition is a good meal is based on grains pulses fruits and vegetables on your plate so i'm going to tell you what each includes but make sure a good meal comprises of these things it could be in any form it's not like always you have to eat rice dal sambar but it could be in different forms so when you are buying just make sure you are you do not end up picking up those items which are really unhealthy for the body rotate food rations it's again similar to inventory of the ingredients something which you have already cooked in the past and the ingredient raw ingredients are still left out it's better to finish them off and with the same ingredient you can prepare multiple things like for example i'll give you like a black chana you can use it in the form of sprouts you can use it in the form of curry you can just simply boil it put little salt pepper and can be had as a salad as well so just see what are the items which are opened and already left at home especially frozen items and try to finish them off last is keep your cost down 
it's important it doesn't matter how much we can afford but go for the alternatives which are like cost effective as well and if you're going to take care of all the six points that i have mentioned definitely it's going to work on your costing as well so these are the tips these are the things that are very important before you focus and go for uh, for your grocery shopping and you plan on stocking up food items now the first item in the list is cereals grains and their alternatives so now why cereals and grains because they are non perishable items you can store them for months they don't spoil at all so these are the things that you need to really stock up and i'm not just talking about rice and atta these two are anyways there at home you can focus on lot of more other options which you can just store at home for example pasta like raw pasta you can just store it and uh, trust me it's not unhealthy we can make really good pasta by adding vegetables to it or simply like my bachelor friends who have not done cooking as such in the past the simplest thing is you can just boil pasta and put pasta sauce into it for these emergency situations i am telling these things so you can just you get you do get frozen vegetables outside as well so if you are really keen on improving the quality of your food those frozen uh, vegetables can be bought little sorted in it and can be added and can be had so these are very simple basic then next comes your oats pretty simple and easy just yesterday only on my instagram i posted how to make oats porridge in just 5 minutes it just needs water and oats you can add little add ons like you can add some nuts and dry fruits to it and just jazz up the taste in the form of by adding little cocoa powder also to it because uh, oats is pretty bland and whatever you add it it takes the flavor of that so uh, it sounds little boring but oats porridge or oats upma can be created and vegetables can be added or some beans can be added or for that matter some sprouts can also be added to it so just like your rice even oats can be had and better is you can roast your oats and keep it because roasting really enhances the flavor of oats trust me try that because uh, uh, if you prepare just plain oats it doesn't taste that good but once you roast it the taste becomes really good so oats is one thing rice you can go with different varieties of rice i am a big fan of white rice and not against it so you can go for even white rice as well or red rice brown rice whatever you eat pasta is one option then different varieties of flours you get you that can be kept bread bread is something you can keep if you're keeping it outside it can stay for 2 to 3 days time but if you just keep it in the fridge you can keep for 10 to 15 days so bread can also be stocked up we get whole wheat crackers in the market and the options i am telling you are pretty easily available in the grocery stores so whole wheat crackers you get easily in the market i'll tell you how to consume these things as well they don't spoil then you get different varieties of cereals now cereals come really handy especially for people who don't want to cook lot of meals like especially breakfast we want to keep it simple easy less cooking so you can go for muesli we get different varieties of granola in the market and uh, you can go for even kellogs uh, corn flakes as well and just add milk to it or even in yogurt you can mix it and eat it with yogurt it tastes really good so if you're allergic to milk or you don't want milk in your breakfast curd is the best option can be mixed up some fruits can be added and bang on it's a it's a really good uh, breakfast or a snack actually so cereals are something that you can stock up and it just stays for long so your cereals grains are the number one option they don't spoil at all you can just store it for months big packets of it you can keep and multiple things can be created out of these cereals next after cereals are your fruits and vegetables now coming to this point um i don't know what are the things will be available in different areas but the initial focus will be go for the fruits and vegetables that are available in your market don't focus on going for broccoli and this that and all if available please go ahead and do it but what, whatever things are available just opt for it make sure you're eating including enough fruits and vegetables in your diet because 
if you uh, heard the previous session on immune boosting foods we have been telling lot of vitamins minerals health and fruits and vegetables are a major source of immune boosting ingredients especially your vitamin c other vitamins minerals they they provide your big chunk of it so fruits and vegetables are extremely important focus on first of all long lasting ones so in your fruits your apples then bananas bananas you can buy little green ones then you can also go for oranges oranges high in vitamin c they also stay for long then in vegetables potatoes sweet potatoes are really good and different kinds of yams so uh, these are the foods that they can stay for long you can keep it outside these fruits and vegetables next comes your cauliflower bell peppers or capsicum carrot these can be stored for long if you do not wash them or if they are uncut because uh, if you wash any of these things it gives moisture to it which causes uh, microbes to grow into it and then that spoils the vegetable so these uh, vegetables can be stored for long you can keep it in the fridge and at the time of using you can just wash it and then cut it next comes dry fruits dry versions of the fruits you get dry kiwis mangoes pineapple dates now these i am not saying are a substitute for your fresh fruits but when you are eating your cereals or you are having your smoothie or simply when you want to mix it in a curd these dry fruits come really handy and they make your meal really tasty adds natural sweetness to it so you can stock up on different varieties of dry fruits again they also don't spoil you can keep it in the fridge and uh, different things can be created out of it next is if in case your fruits and vegetables are not easily available in the market in that case you can go for canned varieties as well see in general we don't opt for canned options as such but right now it's an emergency situation and if in case you are able to get no sugar and low salt or sodium varieties then nothing like it there are varieties wherein fruits are stored in the juice itself so those options are really good so you can opt for canned fruits and vegetables as well if in case the fresh varieties are not available in your area similarly your frozen fruits and vegetables we easily get uh, cut fruits and vegetables and these easy options i'm telling for those people basically who had actually the habit of eating outside because of their work or who used to order food from outside and they are not so pretty okay with cooking lot of foods especially when it comes to cutting chopping and doing all those uh, things so what happens is like these things come really handy and a um, lot of things can be created out of it next i want to come as proteins i didn't mark it as a separate like fruits vegetables or in the name of a food group but why proteins because proteins are very very important they fill up your stomach and a lot of you people must be thinking about your weight gain as well during the scene so protein helps in weight loss as well because it fills up your stomach think about it when you eat chana or rajma rice it fills you up unlike basic dal or or just uh, some vegetable curry with rice you are hungry in next 10 minutes 20 minutes again but once you eat chana rajma with rice or chole with rice it just fills you up you are not hungry for long hours because all these protein items are pretty heavy they keep you full for long hours and you do not have a tendency to eat again and again so these protein items they are a must and you need to stock them up in your home so first options are all your different kinds of dals come into it you can go if you are just in a habit of uh, using only tuar dal this is the time you can try different other varieties of dal like your moong dal masoor dal uh, urad dal then you get horse gram as well then your chana rajma chole soya beans nutri nuggets then your uh, soya granules as well you can make so many things with uh, soy granules like a keema kind of thing can be created vegetables can be added and a good snack can be are uh, created out of it and these things uh, like soy items it doesn't take much time to cook as well so they also don't spoil easily you can store them for long uh, longer period of time 
next comes as a snack can come in dry roasted beans or chana you get roasted chana in the market that's also a very good snack and uh, it's again a protein there's no fat there's no carbohydrate unless and until any uh, added seasoning is there or some fry item is there it doesn't have any fat or carbs as such then some cheese varieties can be stocked at home cheese also doesn't spoil easily so you can stock up cheese and by adding cheese to certain food items it jazz up the flavor of that particular food so cheese is good paneer is something stock up as soon as paneer comes up in your supermarket just grab two three packets of it and just store it i always prefer keeping at least three four packets of paneer because you can do so many things out of paneer cottage cheese you can just stuff up in your uh, chapati and make stuffed roti out of it you can just make a uh, paneer burji out of it little sorting of 2 minutes and it's done you can make some curry out of it stir fry can be created or you have those frozen cut vegetables cut your paneer cubes and just add it add to your uh, stir fry vegetables and just done with within your 5 10 minutes uh, your meal is done so cottage cheese is really good can be stocked up at home you can prepare at home if you are in a habit of doing it otherwise you can just buy it from home or uh, buy from outside then again comes your canned beans if in case the things are not available canned beans are again option can be bought and can be stocked up at home these things are there suddenly if all the shops are closed stocks are not there what to do then these things come handy so you can have these canned options and just keep them at home no need to finish them up soon because they have a long shelf life you can use up these items when suppose the stock is not there near your place they might bring it on a weekend or something like that and you don't know what to be done then these canned items can be used during those times and then if you're okay eating eggs and non veg i'm not stressing much on this right now but if you're okay eating chicken non veg and eggs you can definitely eggs can be had there is no problem with it so you can stock up on eggs as well and uh, some non veg uh, either in the fresh form and if you get frozen uh, like a good frozen one if you're okay to take it then you can stock up on those as well so proteins are important please focus on that and some amount of proteins in your plate is very very important next comes your snacks now a lot of snacks i have already mentioned and snack is the point where a lot of binge eating happens see our breakfast lunch dinner is not a problem because we are in a habit of eating some dal sambar rice with some vegetable palya something we eat for lunch and dinner but the problem happens that 11 o'clock hunger or wo 4 baje 5 baje wali that hunger comes in and that's when it screws up your entire eating so if you are prepared with the foods as such if you have pretty good snacks at home then it's not a problem because a lot of people either end up stopping their cravings and they don't eat till dinner or a lot of people they are unable to control and of course when you don't have anything nobody will look to an apple when you are hungry or to an oats when you are hungry because then we always go for high carb food because that's our psychology wherein we attracts towards those foods those are filling and we grab up on those and then we are guilty okay i had all these things and that was so much quantity so that's why my point was like when you're shopping think nutrition is important and you have small kids at home this is the right time wherein you can focus on their eating as well it's very important because just by telling them don't eat they are not going to listen they are going to follow by watching you it's very important i also have a 6 year old so that's how it works they will watch you eating those things and that's how they get interested what is she eating let me also have a try so if you stock up on these things then munching in between is not going to be a trouble so first option in your snacks can be nuts and seeds they are really good your nuts and seeds can be roasted form or uh, they can be plain you get trail mixes wherein your nuts and seeds are mixed with chocolate or granola so your badam pista walnuts and your sunflower seeds sesame seeds or uh, uh, pumpkin seeds any of those things can be there which are, you can take one or two options as there mix it up you can just keep it at home in between can be had 
popcorn is a really good option provided you are not going for those uh, butter coated ones buy those dry kernels which are easily available in the market pop them up it hardly takes few minutes maybe 2 minutes or so just pop them up and they are really good snack and it fills you up and it's quite crunchy so kids also enjoy eating it similar to popcorn is your makhana i hope majority of you know makhana so it's that uh, it's made out of lotus seed white color one fox tail nut and um, that's also very crunchy very good for health and you can a uh, lot of people eat it when they are fasting actually north india and all they eat makhana with toasted peanuts so that's a very good snack which can be had when you're sitting at home watching something on netflix these snacks come really handy khakra is another option these are like thin roti kinds they are again pretty healthy you get methi khakra whole wheat khakra mixed with jeera and so many varieties are there these are the things i was seeing in the grocery store nobody actually looks into it they were more going for cup noodles and uh, um going for other packaged food those mtr ones and all i'm not saying you can't buy them but these are the things which you can always look into it and if you really want to focus on your healthy eating roasted chana i already told so you, uh, roasted chana you get in different varieties like uh, you get masala ones plain ones in any form you can take then uh, comes your uh, puffed rice or bhel that's a very good snack because you can just add some uh, tomatoes onions to it so dry uh, put in some peanuts into it and done no cooking required as such so people who don't know much of cooking or they don't want to do cooking this is a pretty good healthy snack there's no guilt in it you can just enjoy on puff dry so you can just simply eat it like that it just tastes good um uh, when you eat it just like that then comes your boiled corn you get american sweet corn as well you get it in the frozen section that's again good one kids enjoy it you can just heat it up little bit add little butter to it some salt chaat masala you can mix your sprouts into it and again another good snack is created so boiled corn is pretty good protein bars now protein bars are something you you i think majority of you must have seen these protein bars easily available in the store different brands are there max protein yoga bar then we have some more granola bars are there right bite is there nature valley is there so many varieties are there and they are not bad check the ingredients because nowadays majority comes as natural ingredients no sweeteners are added so protein bars are something they come handy when you have nothing to eat this is something you can munch on they taste really good really good dark chocolate options are there and these things trust me are available in the grocery stores they it's not like i'm talking about the things which are not available they are available and you can stock up on these they have a good shelf life and uh, yeah they don't make you hungry because so many ingredients are added to it and last part is sprouts now sprouts i have already spoken so many times right from cereal grains to the snacks this is something it doesn't need any rocket science people who have who don't know a b c d of cooking it's nothing you just have to soak it overnight your grain your uh, chana or your green moong or horse gram and just tie it in a cloth or just keep it covered in a warm area and in, in a day or two you'll see the sprouts coming out of it again you can make in bulk your sprouts and you can store it in the fridge sprouts can be added to your pulao right from there you can put it in your sandwich as a filling you can just put it in two slices of bread with a chutney on top of it and can be had you can mix your boiled corn with it and can be had it can be mixed with your bhel and then it can be had you can make a paste out of it and a dosa kind of thing can also be created the same paste can be filled in your rotis and a stuffed roti can also be created so see once you make sprouts so many things can be created right from simple ones to a little tough ones but yeah sprouts come really handy no rocket science and can be created pretty easy to make and you can take care of your health because sprouts are very very healthy 
if you can't digest black chana or green moong sprouts is easy to digest because all the gas producing uh, ingredients and in it gets converted and sprouts are uh, easy for the stomach to digest so i guess i've given pretty long list of snacks you can just keep repeating the sa same snack also body doesn't know that you have eaten the same food the morning also or previous day as well it's just the nutrients that body will absorb from that particular food next comes as the extras so extras are what basically these are the things that that are add ons and they can they will help in creating your meals or add that little extra pinch or that flavor to that meal to your plain basic food when these things are added they just help in enhancing the flavor of that food so first thing is nut butters nut butters like your peanut butter almond butter peanut butter is easily available i don't think so almond butter you will get easily in each grocery store but peanut butter is easily available and it can be easily prepared at home actually nothing has to be done your peanuts have to be grinded may be with oil or without oil to an extent that it starts releasing oil and that's it your peanut butter is done peanut butter can be had with bread with chapati it can be just spread on that and uh, it it's good proteins good fats are there but remember they are equally high in fats whether good or bad they have good amount of fat so use them sparingly don't go overboard with these but yes it can be added to your smoothies as well and it is really good next comes your hummus hummus a uh, lot of you must be knowing if you don't know it's actually a paste of your chickpeas which is your um, chole so the thing is this it's again easily available or else you can just prepare at home boiled chickpeas it's just you have to uh, grind it to a fine paste and to that you can add some garlic to it little olive oil and it's high protein spread and especially for the kids it's really good your nut butters hummus and all can be had with fruit or vegetable sticks they really enjoyed it because your vegetables and all are crunchy and they add uh, that extra taste to that uh, particular fruit and vegetable and that's how they are able to eat their fruits and vegetables as well then comes your plain yogurt or greek yogurt greek yogurt i have kept as an option you can opt for your plain curd also so plain curd ko khane ke bahut sare tarike hain it's not just that ki sirf rice dal ke sath aur some tadka maar ke you can have your curd like i mentioned in the beginning you can put your cereals in the curd mix it up and you can eat it like that you can put raw oats in your curd i prefer eating my oats like that two tablespoon of oats put it in the curd and leave it for 5 10 minutes so what happens the water in the curd swells up your oats so your oats soaks into it it swells up becomes soft and to that you add your raisins thoda sa badam you can add if you have pomegranate at home sprinkle little pomegranate on top of it and the taste is really good you can just give a try if you don't like oats try this way and trust me you are going to enjoy this snack so curd is really good for your gut also because of good bacteria and probiotics are there so that's how you also you can enjoy your curd then comes your dry herbs and spices uh these things uh, can be just added to your uh, these sprouts and salads and they just add extra flavor to it now mustard sauce why i mentioned because compared to your other sauces mustard sauce is still okay to use because it still comes with lot of benefits so if you want to have some kind of a sauce or something in your sandwich or you want to put it something in your salad you know you can always use this as an option honey something doesn't spoil at all honey is like something it keeps on aging and the more it age it stays better so honey is something you can always keep it at home and uh, it is something a good remedy when it's mixed with uh, ginger juice good for cold and cough so anybody catching cold or cough or they are not feeling okay few like a teaspoon of ginger juice can be taken mixed with honey or simply can be mixed with your lemon water it can be had so honey is something it's better to if even if you are not using it honey is something always keep it at home because uh, it it becomes handy for a lot of us snacks and food options 
And last of my two options in these extras are not actually extras, but we need them at times in between. Because uh, whatever we hear about it, that they are bad, when we are sitting at home and a lot of work is there, and no more it's nine to six job right now, because work from home is like, I think starts at seven in the morning or eight, and goes on, goes on till 10, 11, 12. So there is no time limit for people who are working from home. So you need your tea, coffee in between. So make sure you stock up on that. Different varieties of tea can also be kept. Like you have your different herbal teas and different flavor teas. They are really soothing. And uh, one quick tip I'll give you for the green tea people. Uh, if you dislike it, just try doing it this way. Take hot water in a cup and put your green tea packet and brew it just for a few seconds. Don't leave it till your last sip because that's when your green tea is over boiled or over brewed it becomes brown in color it becomes too bitter and that's how majority people dislike green tea so i'm not saying green tea for your uh, weight loss or anything because i don't believe much in that but because your weight loss or anything depends on your overall entire diet so green tea is something anybody who is in a habit of drinking a lot of tea coffee this can come in between wherein you can uh, just brew it for a few seconds and remove the tea bag. Don't try pressing with your spoon and take out all the extracts of green tea in your cup and then thinking I'm not wasting anything. But that's how you end up uh, making your tea very bitter and we dislike it. And then your dark chocolate. It's important instead of stocking up on other chocolates and kids also keep asking it because they don't have any other option than to play and eat. So better would be keep dark chocolate. Anything above 70% cocoa will be good. I wouldn't suggest too much going 90, 95%. It's too bitter. If you're okay to eat it, you can. But anything above 70 is good enough. Keep dark chocolate. A cube of it is not bad. It helps in a lot of things. So this is a treat which at times we need in between. So these extras are something that... Uh, Keep an eye on them and make sure you stock up on that. So these, this was an exhaustive list. Now make a note of these things. What are the things available in my area? What are the things I am comfortable with cooking or let me try with something new? Accordingly, you make up your list and do your grocery shopping and make sure you buy in bulk so that you are not visiting grocery store again and again. Now, when you have bought your things, how am I going to store them? How am I going to preserve? So for certain things, I am going to tell you what are the things that you can do to extend the shelf life of your food. Try not to store your fruits and vegetables together. Keep them separate because I've seen people uh, or I have also done in the past wherein in the same packet, I have kept my vegetables and along with that, I kept my apples as well. What happens is like they produce different kinds of gases and they tend to spoil each other. So you will end up spoiling your fruits and vegetables. So try to stock them separately. Try not to wash your fruits. Right now I'm telling because you have to stock them up and generally we end up buying in larger quantities like if I have bought grapes or something. Don't wash it immediately because you won't be able to store them as such. Because what happens, like I mentioned earlier, moisture is there and you end up spoiling them because because of the moisture, a lot of microbes grow up there. So uh, the shelf life actually reduces and uh, you won't be able to stock them up for longer. Next is blanching your wedgies. Now, your spinach or green peas is something <clears throat> we can't store them for long if we are going to keep them. So what is the process of blanching basically? What happens is like we put our vegetable into boiling water for a few minutes and then we take out and put it in ice cold water for another few minutes. So what happens is like we are, we are stopping the cooking process by putting them in cold water. But at the same time, by putting in hot water, we are deactivating the enzymes that can spoil your vegetable. So you can do it with your green peas. You can do it with your green leafy vegetables. I repeat, 
you need to put them in boiling water for few minutes don't boil them on a stove but boil water take it aside from your stove put your vegetable into it for few minutes and then immediately put it into ice cold water so what happens your cooking process stops at the same time the enzyme gets deactivated and then store them in packets in the freezer and you can store it for long like couple of weeks actually you can keep them so that's the way you can store your vegetables tomatoes now tomatoes are required in almost all the curries actually even in salads and so for salads yes you can have it in actual whole form but for your curries and all what you can do if you have bought in bulk and in bulk buying you do get certain discounts as well in some stores so if you have bought in bulk my suggestion is you can form a puree out of it and put it in the fridge you can even boil it and keep it or else you just prepare puree out of it and put it in the fridge what other thing also can be done since it will be used in curries once the puree is formed and you have kept it in an airtight container put a layer of thin layer of oil on top of it and don't mix it because if it has a thin layer of oil on top of it it's not going to spoil microbes will not get a chance to penetrate your uh, tomato puree inside it so that's how you can store your tomatoes now comes your root vegetables root vegetables are something anything which grows under the ground are easy to store can be kept outside keep them separate don't stock them all together and uh, keep them in well ventilated area that's how these root vegetables right from your potatoes different yams sweet potatoes are pretty good try including them in your meals so many things can be done out of sweet potatoes so all these uh, root vegetables can be stocked outside your fridge now you can make good soups stocks or even uh, teas are there but even uh, uh, vegetable stock or non veg stock or broths are pretty soothing when you have it when you are sitting at home and something warm you want to have they come handy you can buy either the stock cubes that you get from outside people uh, if you don't have time you do get stock uh, those cubes you get you can just buy put it in hot water and your broth is ready if you have prepared in huge quantity you can store it like that or you can freeze them put it in that tray kinds or in small containers and then freeze them and once you need it just take out one portion and uh, and you can use it again and make your broth out of it so once it's freeze you can just keep it for months so and they are pretty soothing during the day you can have them as well freezing bread i mentioned in the beginning so better if your bread slices bread is in slices that's instead of keeping entire loaf cut it into slices and keep it in the fridge so that when you want it you are not taking the entire loaf outside warming it up and again freezing it up because that's not the right way to do it it's bad for health better keep slices in fridge and once you need them take out the slices that you need and use them at a time seeds for sprouting is there i have already mentioned about it so sprouting i can't stop talking about it how good it is and how quick things can be created out of sprouts and the seeds are something you can just store it all your chana rajmas don't spoil you can create sprouts whenever you want keep an eye on eggs it's important egg storing lot of us don't know actually how to store eggs because as soon as our eggs come we just put them in the fridge door inside or put them in the bowl like that because that's how it's kept but the best option to store eggs for long is to keep it in the same carton in which it comes because that carton doesn't absorb food smell or odor from different other foods and that's how your egg doesn't spoil so better keep it in the same container and that's how you can keep it for long if you have boiled your eggs in bulk then again you can keep them in the fridge make sure you are not removing the shell out of that egg without peeling them you can store them for long and once you need them then you can just peel it off and use it last bit and uh, preservation about your meats and non veg items keep them uncut and wrapped up in the freezer if you have got big pieces just cut them up once you need them don't cut them into small pieces because the surface uh, area increases the minute you cut them into small small pieces and the bacterial attack is more 
Whereas when you don't cut them, bacterial action is less. So wrap them up and put them in the freezer. And once you need them, that's when you take it out, cut it, and then use it. My last uh, slide for this day is about healthy cooking techniques. And uh, it's very important. See, cooking is something maybe we have not done in the past. But this is the right time wherein you can start learning this skill because somebody said this could be a survival skill because we cannot order from food outside and the only option we are left with is cooking our own meals. And that's the best thing that you can do because once the days are normal, please continue this habit of eat cooking and preparing your meals at home and ha having the habit of preparing your own meals rather than always ordering from outside. And there are pretty good easy techniques. And it's not necessary that you need to cook every single day. You can cook in batches and you can store it. If you are okay to do that, your family is okay, you can do it wherein you just cook it and store it for the next two days. You can do your alternate day cooking. This is basically for the bachelors who are just sitting and working day and night from home and don't know what to do, don't know cooking, no ordering from outside. So there are a few things that you can do and prepare just quick, easy, healthy meals for yourself. First thing is cook smart, pick recipes you can handle. Yes, you can experiment, but do it when you have ample amount of time. So think about the foods which you are pretty okay to cook or you have seen your mom's doing at home, how she used to do. Go for quick, simple, easy recipes rather than going for those high-end ones. No doubt you. this is the time you can try, but keep it simple because it will save a lot of your time. Quick, healthier cooking methods. Yes, of course, we know frying is not a good option, though it's a home-cooked food. People have told me, I eat healthy food. I, I eat only home-cooked food. Now, what is home-cooked food? If it's a puri, definitely, see, home-cooked doesn't mean that it's healthy. We need to accept that. It's not healthy. Healthy doesn't mean home-cooked. Yes, home-cooked is more hygienic. We can control what are the ingredients going into it. But anything going deep into the oil is definitely not okay. Sometimes to satisfy our palate, it's good to have it. But anything, once it goes deep into the oil, you lose up all the nutrients out of it. So blanching, I've already explained. Roasting is option. Baking is there. Stir frying is really good. Stir frying is putting all your vegetables or your paneer into it with a little bit of oil and just saute it or stir fry it on a pan. Poaching is there wherein you cook your food on, in hot water, like we poach our eggs, no oil, nothing is used, and we prepare it in hot water kind. Sometimes people make it in hot vinegar as well. Braising is another thing. Braising is something all of us know because this is the basic cooking that we do wherein we roast all our masalas of food in a pan, and then we add uh, water or some liquid to it and cook on low flame. So that water adds uh, gravy to that particular food. So try cooking on uh, low flame when we add water and roasting on a flame. So then low flame is important. And steaming, of course, is good. So when you have no other options, you can just put all your vegetables into a pressure cooker. You can just steam it, add some sprouts to it, or you can just simply eat it like that. You can just add a lot of herbs into it because that just adds a good flavor to your food. Try switching to healthier ingredients apart from only salt and lot of spices because we have a tendency of adding lot of spices at times because we think spices say he taste taiga. A lot of times I have heard a lot of chefs telling me, Madam, you have told uh, spices need alna, but taste kaise aiga. But that doesn't apply actually. It's not required that you need to always add too much spices to add flavor to your food. A lot of these dried herbs and spices you get as a mix, you get as separate. Lemon juice is there, which can be added. So try these ingredients to add flavor to your cooking. Next is do not use low heat point oils. What I mean is you must have seen when you put ghee or butter on a pan, it starts burning very fast. Very, very fast it starts burning. So it, it's not that these oils are bad, 
but try not to use them for your high end cooking because as soon as it starts burning they become bad and the trans fats are formed in them so avoid that try avoid avoid cooking at a very high heat because that just burns your food internally and from outside and you just lose up on all your nutrients don't overcook also your food because that's how all the nutrients are lost in that frying you need to avoid consider one pot meals this is like quick fast and it's like you can put your rice into it vegetables are there you can add paneer or some beans into it little dal and your veg biryani is created or a vegetable rice is there wherein everything is then you can eat it with a chutney or some curd so think about one pot meal because it's not required always to have so many varieties of foods on the table unless and until you have that time to create it please do it but people who don't have time you can just put all the ingredients together or do a stir fry of vegetables with paneer into it and uh, put little uh, uh, tomato puree into it and that can be had just like that let add some uh, boiled rice to it and done your meal is done so think about quick recipes wherein you can just add up all the ingredients together and can be created so i'm almost done with my uh, today's uh, this webinar so no need to ditch healthy eating one when you are during this during this lockdown period because when i go to grocery stores and all i keep seeing people packing up on lot of chips biscuits coke pepsi and all of that fine sometimes we do need them but right now our immune system is very critical we we keep hearing we need to consume lot of immune boosting foods so just by eating oranges in between or thoda sa ginger tea le liya or something like that your immunity is not going to improve like that your overall eating pattern needs to be in place if you really want to keep yourself healthy and if you don't want to at least gain weight forget about weight loss if you don't want to gain weight these things are important and my last focus are always kids because they are watching you what you are doing and this is the foundation time wherein they are you can focus on them and really help in improving their eating habits so don't break your head too much about uh, what am i going to do this that i'm gaining weight if you are going to take care of all these things then it's going to really help you and no one food causes weight gain or weight loss or it's unhealthy it's all about how much are we eating in what quantity agar chips tha to did i eat the entire packet of the chips or did i had small little bit of chips there is a huge difference if you had little small amount it you just satisfied your taste buds and you're fine so these things are very important and uh, Yes, so that's about it. So you can, we can take up the questions now. Thank you, Miss Rashmi. So uh, we have few questions. So the first one goes. So uh, Mr. Avinash is asking, mm -hmm. how long can we store cooked vegetables in refrigerator to use again? Okay, so vegetable wise, uh, it varies. Like boiled potatoes without peeling, you can keep it for weeks. so i always prefer keeping boiled uh, white potato and sweet potato always in my fridge because when i don't have option to cook anything they are very handy cut it across and just stir fry and done whereas compared to your uh, other vegetables like greens and uh, uh, like uh, these where where water is more like your greens have lot of water like your uh, uh, loki Uh, your rich god where the water content is high in vegetables they have a tendency to spoil really fast so cooked ones it's better you finish it off in a day or two but a stir fry kinds wherein yams are used or carrots are used broccoli is used there not much moisture is there no much water is there they can store for 2 3 days maybe even 5 6 days cooked ones they don't spoil okay thank you Uh, the next one uh, are oats gluten free and can these be eaten by cancer patient okay see uh, there is a mixed concept about oats as such so few people say it does contain uh, gluten so uh, as per the researches there is a little bit of gluten in oats so when we talk about gluten free diet in that we do at times suggest it all depends because i have people who are able to digest gluten but at the same time they can't digest wheat 
and uh, at the same time gluten processing is done in the plants where wheat is also processed generally so that's why we get a note like a warning on the oats packet as well that they are processed in the plants where gluten was also done so as such very small amount you can say is there but uh, generally people who are intolerant to gluten they are able to digest oats as such and uh, there is no harm for cancer patients eating gluten the point is with cancer patients immunity is at uh, stake we have to be really careful so we always go for steamed or boiled versions of the food so if oats along with certain vegetables or with whatever it is mixed and it's prepared well and cooked well there is no harm in eating oats as such okay so the next one goes what is your suggestion to bachelors who rely on outside dabbas who don't have time to cook food and who yeah. have limited resources for cooking at home yeah that's what so for them only because that was one of my major concerns when i was working on this presentation so like i mentioned on those people so many snack items i mentioned in my uh, presentation at the same time right starting from your breakfast if i say a quick uh, uh plan i i can just tell you for the people who can't cook you can start with cereals wherein you can just put milk into it or you can just add curd to it like i said and you can have your cereals like muesli or granola and if you don't want to have cereals bread is an option just apply peanut butter or a slice of cheese you can apply to it and you can have it in the morning along with a buttermilk or if you want to have your tea also you can have it or you can drink your milk as well then next comes your in between snack or good fruit any fruit you can pick up and eat it at 10 o'clock along with some nuts you can eat no cooking required in this comes to your lunch now see everything can we can't do wherein you are just relying on easy to or do things because little cooking will be required like you can just boil your rice i think boiling rice is very easy do it in pressure cooker one simple technique i'll tell you uh whatever quantity of rice you are taking take double the amount of water if one katori rice take two katoris of water and two whistles in pressure cooker two whistles and you are done okay that's how your rice is prepared now when you have the boiled rice you get lot of mixes in the market like fully ugre rice lemon rice aata hai and uh, what else you get wangi bhat ka powder you get so many different mixes you get just put little oil put your rice put that masala into it and you can just mix it up you can scramble your egg and you can mix it with your boiled rice and once you're cooking your rice in the pressure cooker you can just add little dal to it vegetables to it and pressure cook it or you can do a khichdi also khichdi is really good put moong dal into it rice to it and you can do one more extra cup of water so that your khichdi is not too dry so extra water and do some two three pressure cooks and it's done so cooking will be there we have to do certain amount of cooking because without that we can't escape and you can just prepare for two days thing so next day you don't have to cook at lunch time if you have prepared it today and you are absolutely okay eating it comes your evening snack similar thing you can do your roasted chana you can do your bread item you can do some fruits you can munch on some vegetables and then comes your dinner you can repeat your lunch and the dinner or you can create something you can even do pasta as well just boil it again and put your pasta sauce we get even ready to eat pasta for nowadays i am okay using those pasta as well because we don't have option to do that so even that option can be done you get a masala along with it and uh, we get whole wheat options as well in few supermarkets i saw we get whole wheat pasta options with the taste maker along with it and uh, that can be done i wouldn't suggest to go for roti and chapatis because uh, uh that's out of the picture that's not something somebody who has done it will do it but you can try learning this trick but something made with rice uh, comes handy in the dinner or you can just simply stick to stir frying your vegetables put paneer into it and you can just eat it like that because if you have done your snack in the evening trust me you will not be hungry for dinner as such if you have not eaten anything entire evening you will be crazy to go mad with the food and you will end up eating so many things so if you take up the things from my presentation so many things i have mentioned which you can stock up and do things but you cannot escape smaller bits of cooking you have to do that yeah 
Thank you. I think that's a good suggestion. So uh, we have another question. Uh, it is related to intermittent fasting. So Ankit wants to know what yeah. is your take on intermittent fasting? What are the benefits and what is the procedure? Okay, thanks Ankit for this question. And I was pretty much expecting this question during my presentation because a lot of my even clients are for it. And I am not against this intermittent fasting compared to your keto diets and lot of the fat diets. Because intermittent fasting is basically a fasting diet. But at the same time, I don't suggest to everybody. Because uh, uh, just a quick thing, people who don't know what is intermittent fasting, one of the techniques where it, what we do is that we eat in eight hours duration and we fast for 16 hours basically. So if a person who is comfortable fasting for that long hours and eating in that eight hours window period, I think this lockdown time period is pretty good to do intermittent fasting because you are not going outside as such wherein you, you are doing some uh, uh, official meetings where you have to eat something or you are not going outside wherein a lot of energy is required. When you are at home, my take is like you can go ahead and do it, but make sure you are doing it sensibly. Uh, and it's not for people who are prone for a lot of acidity or stomach related issues because long hours of fasting can actually trigger your condition. So we have to do it sensibly and uh, if, if you like it and if you know actually how to do it, then this lockdown period is pretty good to do intermittent fasting actually. And it's like you have to eat twice and in between you need to make sure you're not eating as such. You can drink up on herbal teas black tea wherein it's a zero calorie thing you are not providing calories as such to your body during that fasting time period and if you work out during that period nothing like it it really helps actually thank you miss rashmi so the next one is uh, as you mentioned that avoid washing vegetables and fruits while stocking up so here is a question when we get veggies and fruits from shop many people would have already touched it what yes. if they have touched it after sneezing or coughing. How are we supposed to store it without washing? See, the thing is this, uh, now we can't do, we don't know what has happened before it has uh, turned up to our house. So if you know that the amount what you have purchased is like for a day or two, I wouldn't suggest you to stock up as such like that. In generally, I'm suggesting people depending upon, see, in my area and all, the food is like... Uh, it's like a lot of crowd comes because not many grocery stores are open and they don't have much of supplies. But if you know that not too many people come and the things are not that uninfected, you can store them like that in the packets. Bring it up in the packets and store them up and open it up once you need it. But you're bringing from outside and you know it's just a one day stock or next day you can wash it and basically potassium per magnet can be used to wash off all the germs out of uh, those particular fruits and vegetables. So my point is, if you have not purchased in bulk as such, then go ahead and wash it. But if not, then uh, better would be considering the hygiene part right now and considering your outside situations, you will better know your grocery store condition. Better would be buy those uh, fruits in limited quantity and go for apples, oranges kinds of kind of fruits. Whereas easy to store for longer period of time. Okay, so uh, here goes the last question. So mm -hmm. Vishali wants to know, in these days, lack of fruits and vegetables uh, availability is low. So the availability of fruits and vegetables is low. So yeah. can we take multivitamin to fulfill the nutrient deficiency? See, again, uh, I wouldn't suggest for a multivitamin like that. Because see, multivitamin contains a lot of uh, uh, vitamins and minerals which you're not getting only from your fruits and vegetables but from your other foods as well. A basic multivitamin can be done on and off during this period. See, it depends upon uh, if in case you have a medical condition or not. There are so many factors before we get into a basic supplement like a multivitamin. So it can be done. But I would suggest because it's not like fruits and vegetables are not available at all. Yes, we have limited varieties. Limited options are there. We don't have so many varieties. At least something is available. So I would suggest eat those things. But uh, if you know your internal health is all okay, there are no medical conditions as such we, wherein we need to focus on certain things, then a basic multivitamin can be had 
there is no harm in that do keep giving breaks in between when you are doing a multivitamin see when it comes to any supplement no it's very personalized uh, suggestion comes in uh on a platform like this i just cannot say okay you go ahead and take it because it depends on so many things about your physical condition what are the things overall you are doing in a day so a lot of things have to be considered and then it goes for a supplement suggestion whereas a vitamin c kind of a supplement is a water soluble and it flushes out of the body so anybody can take vitamin c as such unless and until you are going through some of your medical condition where we need to see otherwise such kind of vitamins no problem but in a multivitamin you do get lot of minerals also like calcium magnesium vitamin d and we don't know what is the status of these things in your body if your levels are already okay they might just need to go high on those uh, nutrients so that's the thing okay all right so uh, that was a lovely session i would say ms rashmi so there were so many insights which you have given and so many myths which you have busted today so with this on behalf of dr reddies i thank our speaker and all the participants for taking time out and wish you all your day is full of positivity and good health because good health can't wait jai hind